Hi, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today, I have a very special guest, Trudy, Trudy Christian. Um, Trudy is Dominican, so she's a sister from the Caribbean. Um, Trudy has, her background is in biology and public health, um, and she's also an advocate for women's health. This is why I wanted to, Trudy to be on my channel. Um, I feel like, you know, we have that in common, and being an advocate for health you know, women's health especially, um, I thought it was a good idea to just bring her on so she can share what her platform is about and also talk a little bit about her um, her journey as a sister. So when I say sister, I'm talking about um, someone living with PCOS. Um, Trudy is also a talk show host and is the owner of Women's Health Plus. So I'll link all of her information below. So you guys definitely go check her out, support her page. You may know someone who is struggling with PCOS as well. And this content might be very, very useful. Um, you know, Trudy's not a stranger to me. I We go back to being undergrads at MSU. Um, so I've interacted with her before and she's such a beautiful soul. If you guys only knew what Trudy had to put up with <laughs> to even be on this channel, um, I'm very grateful for her, her even having the patience to deal with me and all of my technical issues. So Trudy, welcome. I appreciate you being here and thank you so much for pouring out your knowledge um, with everyone else on my channel. So take the platform, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your journey. How did you get started on social media as the founder of Women's Health Plus? What was the inspiration behind your journey? Hi, Binta. It's, it's really nice to be with you on your platform. Uh, of course, as you said, we do go way back. So, you know, we have that university background, that crazy time <laughs> of being undergrads in common. So it's really good to link back up with you. And especially since we have this common um, interest of health and women's health in particular. Uh, for me, I am a very passionate advocate for women's reproductive health um, awareness, particularly because I suffer with a reproductive health issue, a hormonal issue called the polycystic ovary syndrome. And as you said, I'm sure some of your listeners may, you know, be aware of this syndrome and may also know someone or have it themselves. So it's a very important um, issue. It affects a lot of women. And because of that and other health issues, combined with my background in public health, because that's what I studied when I did my um, master's, I decided to create this platform dedicated to women's health and to educating people about women's health. And I decided to call it Women's Health Plus. It's also sort of, a, it's also not sort of, it is a business because what I do through my platform, I offer consultations to women who just need that health education, help them understand better some of their reproductive health issues. And also um, if people need coaching for managing their PCOS symptoms in particular, that's where I come in. So it's meant to be a health education platform, but also a resource for women who need, you know, one-on-one -on -one kind of education about what they're going through. Okay. And, you know, I have been following you on Facebook. I've, you know, I've been watching you. We have been Facebook friends for a while. Um, mm -hmm. And the sort of content that you put out um, is so helpful, Trudy. You know, coming from the Caribbean, we're not always the most vocal or the best advocates for our health. You know, it always, it seems mm -hmm. as though sometimes there has to be an issue before we address the problem. So I really do appreciate the fact that you're being so proactive about educating women about PCOS. Um, I've learned a lot through your platform, even though I also have a, a, a major, like a degree in biology, I'm mm -hmm. learning so much through your platform. So that is the one thing I really appreciate. Um, my viewers wouldn't know that you also, um, you dabble with fitness. I know for a while you have been on a fitness journey. So I wanted to share that aspect of it because believe it or not, Trudy, you do inspire me. There, there are times I sit around the house and then you might post something. I'm like, okay, Trudy went to the gym today and what am I doing? Sitting on watch Netflix. I mean, people don't think that, you know, um, I am an advocate of health, health, health and fitness, but there are times I'm lazy and there are times I struggle. So 
I want you to tie in your fitness journey. Um, did it have anything to do with the PCOS part of it or was this a separate goal? And um, how are you, you know, progressing through that? Because I find your journey very inspiring in the fitness um, lives as well. <laughs> okay. So basically women with PCOS, a lot of women with PCOS have difficulty managing their weight. As I said, PCOS is a hormonal issue and some of the imbalances that occur with PCOS, they really throw off the woman's ability to manage their weight, their weight, her weight. So that is, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people with PCOS have weight management issues. So I definitely have a weight issue and I've had it, you know, throughout my, throughout my life from puberty onwards, I've had a weight management management wow. issue. And what happens essentially is I, I, I gain weight so easily, you know, sometimes I'll tell people, you know, I would smell food and I'll gain weight. Now I know about, <laughs> now I know about PCOS, I know that it's that hormonal issue, you know, particularly for me, insulin resistance is, is creating that, you know, that, that weight gain propensity that I have. So in order to manage PCOS, one of the key things to do is to watch your, your diet, have a very healthy diet, a low-carb diet in particular, if you're suffering with insulin resistance like I do, and also to exercise consistently. So when I, you know, really learned a lot about PCOS management, um, I decided to kind of... Uh, commit to exercise. I've been, I've been on exercise programs from my childhood um, thereafter and, and until adulthood. But, you know, consistency is always an issue. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners will, will agree. <laughs> oh, they know. Yeah. Yes. Consistency is definitely an issue. But to manage PCOS, you really need to be consistent. So I started um, maybe last year kind of really trying to prioritize exercise. And, and although I had been doing various exercise programs in the past, I decided to kind of commit to, to this one. And um, I was successful in losing a lot of weight last year. I will admit to your listeners as well that. <laughs> From Christmas and a, 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 a dance I had with COVID over Christmas yes. and, and, you know, just life thereafter, I have really kind of dropped off on this mission. But it's something that I intend to continue, which is just essentially being very consistent with exercise. I don't do high impact um, exercise. I do very, you know, moderate um aerobics and I do weight training. Weight training was a very big part of my success last year. So that that's where I'm at. Yes, it really is in response to PCOS. And it's one of the key things that I have to do in order to manage um, the syndrome is workout. I really, really am so happy you mentioned the weightlifting part of it because I find us mm -hmm. women, to be honest, we resist speaking about weight. We have this idea, well, some of us, you touch a weight, you're going to look like a man. And that is so, so crucial, especially in transforming how you look. You know, when you, when you have a little bit of muscle, you know, when you're resting, your body is going to burn much more um, calories than just relying on that aerobic. So I'm really happy you mentioned the weightlifting because I swear, mm -hmm. even with interacting with women, it's the idea is that, oh my gosh, I touch a dumbbell or I touch a weight, I'm going to look like a man. And this is not true. So I'm really happy you mentioned that as well. Um, I also heard you mention that you can manage PCOS. Um, so I just wanted you know, the viewers to know that this is not something you can necessarily cure. Am I right? You cannot cure it. It's a hormonal issue. Um, so you mentioned the weight, um, you know, managing your weight. Is there anything else you can do? I know you're not a medical doctor, but you are living with PCOS, by the way, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, so is there anything else you can do? Of course, you're not giving medical advice, but what else have you been doing or what can you share for someone who is living with this? Yeah. So, um, and as I said earlier, I do coach or help women with managing PCOS. So in addition to, you know, my personal experience, I also have a lot of experiences that are related to me from, you know, clients and people who I work with in the PCOS support group. PCOS is this disorder in which the male hormone in, the, in a woman tends to be a little elevated. That's what happens in a lot of, of women with PCOS. And um, one of the reasons for that could be 
insulin resistance and therefore creating more insulin, causing the ovaries to kind of start overproducing testosterone. Oh. So when we talk about managing PCOS, what we really want to do is get that hormonal balance back. So you want to get that male hormone essentially a, a, a lower than it, it, it maybe is. And you want to get your estrogen, you know, to where it should be. Right. So the balance is interesting. And for me, the type of PCOS, which I have, there are several types, by the way, but this insulin resistance issue that I have, managing the PCOS really involves kind of making sure that insulin resistance is taken care of. So yes, exercise, but also a focus on diet that is particularly low carbohydrates and well, low fat, but the carbohydrates, are so key, you know, to making <laughs> sure that that insulin level doesn't spike in somebody. So yeah. um, when people talk about PCOS and management, they're looking for relief in terms of having regular menstrual periods, because a okay. lot of people with PCOS don't have regular menstrual periods. Right. As a woman with PCOS, you may not be ovulating regularly. That's why your period is absent. So some women management for them means ovulating so that they can get pregnant because that's something that they, you know, they want. So management really has to do with alleviating some of the symptoms and weight gain is one, a lack of a menstrual period is one male pattern hair growth is another one so when we talk about managing pcos diet exercise and yes there are a lot of supplements that people take to assist with their management as well vitamin d for, for instance um inositol which seems to be very popular um some women get prescribed the drug metformin which helps with the insulin resistance so there are a lot of things to help with management but key areas are the diet and the exercise Okay, thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Trudy, that sounds like a lot. It sounds like you have to be so committed to um, addressing PCOS. So how, how do you even keep up with this? How do you remain inspired, remain positive? How do you keep up with your fitness? How do you do it? It's a lot. And I'm, I would imagine if a woman has so much, she's a mom, she's working, she's a wife, she has a business, everything going on. We put ourselves on the back burner. So how do you do this? How do you manage your time? How do you keep up? As I mentioned a little earlier too, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I can say how I manage when I'm good, but there are <laughs> times when I fall off too. So I, I just want everybody to know, I'm speaking from the perspective of having fallen off in terms of management multiple times myself. So I'm no stranger to kind of losing focus, but how do you get back? is really what's important. It's all about kind of visualizing what you want for yourself and how you want your health to be and taking those steps to make that happen. And sometimes if you look at the whole pictures, you look at, okay, I have PCOS or I have, um, in addition to PCOS, I maybe have diabetes, which is very common for women with PCOS, uh -huh. to, you know, type 2 diabetes. I have this, I have that. How am I going to manage all of these things? You really just have to look at things and take it one step at a time. So like you look at one little issue. Like, so for me, <laughs> when I dropped off with my exercise routine, I started back with like just 10 minutes a day. So taking these little steps and like, really congratulating yourself for doing one small thing every day is the way to really keep focused. That's what I would say. I like that. I like that perspective, mm -hmm. Trudy. I like the fact that you mentioned chunks, like, so 10 minutes, you start off with 10 minutes and then maybe you mm -hmm. can build on that time. And also the importance of positive reinforcement. So you reward yourself um, yeah. with something and that in itself can be very motivating. So thank you so much. I know you're busy, Trudy. This is definitely not the first and last interview I'm going to have with you. This is very enlightening. But as I said to my audience, I wanted to bring you on here just to talk about PCOS and how that merges with fitness. I appreciate your time. I know you're at work. You'll be back. Guys, definitely check out Trudy's information at the bottom. Go to her page, Women's Health Plus. You will find so much information on there and your little talk show is always fun to look at as well <laughs> so you'll enjoy that um definitely give her a follow Trudy thank you so much and everyone do take care and until next time peace bye guys <laughs>